Washington, D.C. Let's bring in our I-24 News senior Washington correspondent, Dan Ravive. And Dan, was the Trump administration surprised by the level of violence, the death toll with these clashes in Gaza? They weren't showing much surprise, and you could say not that much sorrow either. Now, you did hear the deputy spokesman at the White House talk about these tragic deaths, which he blamed entirely on Hamas, the radical Palestinian organization that governs Gaza. Was Israel to blame? Not according to the Trump White House. Israel was protecting its borders. Israel has a right to defend itself. Uh, it's been noted, certainly, around the world that the U.S. is standing firmly with Israel. That's something that the Trump Trump White House is proud of, but here in Congress, where I am right now, we're getting a, a partisan divide. Republicans are proud of what happened. Some Republican senators and members of the House went to the ceremony in Jerusalem, but no Democrats did, and now some Democrats are saying that at least the timing of moving the embassy was poor, perhaps adding more fuel to the fire and thus contributing to the violence. David? Dan, the Trump administration has argued that by settling Jerusalem, it could make future peace talks maybe a bit easier. I wonder if you can explain the logic. Uh, well, not for the first time, David. You're asking me to use my Trump translation machine. Uh, and we noted that the president has indeed said that he took Jerusalem off the table. Uh, Palestinians were very much insulted, as though you mean Jerusalem won't even be negotiated for. Uh, that's not what U.S. officials meant by that. We don't know what the president meant, but U.S. officials absolutely say that everything's open for negotiation if only the Palestinians and the Israelis would return to the bargaining table. What Trump apparently meant was that Jerusalem shouldn't be the obstacle at the beginning, as it often was thought of, and they should just get down to start talking. However, even in the speeches that mentioned peace on this day, including uh, Jared Kushner, the president's son-in-law, at the ceremony in Jerusalem, his wife Ivanka Trump, John Sullivan, the deputy secretary of state, Stephen Mnuchin, the treasury secretary, and here in Washington, Vice President Mike Pence at an Israeli embassy celebration, he pointed out that Jerusalem means city of peace. Sure, they all spoke with some hope, but no mention at all of the violence on the Gaza border or what seems rather hopeless right now. So if you're asking if it got harder, it reminds me, well, you might be asking the mythical Sisyphus, did it get easier or harder to keep pushing that boulder up the hill? Does it make a difference? It's never going to get there. David? Dan Revive, our senior Washington correspondent. Dan, thank you.